Well, the lure of working from home and making money at it is big. That's why our Work at Home series has been so popular. We've been featuring local work at home jobs that really do work. Today, meet a Cherry Hill mom who's made a go of it. I worked in television for years. I started out at NBC10. And from production assistant at NBC10, Patty Feeney went on to full-time work as a producer at Banyan Productions. But long work days and the birth of her son forced her to make a change. After I had my son, I just never saw him anymore. I just, I was giving him to the babysitter before dawn and picking him up after dark. So Patty found a way to work from home. Because working from home gives her the time to raise her four-year-old son and two-year-old daughter. I think it's the best of all worlds because you do get to, to spend your life with your kids. I just love to talk with my kids. I love to see them develop. Advice for other moms who want to get into a work-at-home business? Research and just take a look and keep, keep your mind open to find a different opportunity. It's an automated way to make money on the internet. So, how does it work? And why would you share it with somebody? This is exactly how this works. All right. So you've got these big Fortune 500 companies, household names, companies with household names, right, that spend, they have a lot of money allocated to advertising. And you see this every day. You turn on your TV, you see advertising. You turn on the radio, you hear advertising. Print magazines, all this stuff. Well, these companies have big advertising budgets, and they allocate it in different places. One of the places that they allocate it is to the Internet. They have a large portion of their budget set aside to advertise online. And so what I did was I went to them and I said, look, would you pay me to advertise for you? Would you pay me if I send you a customer? And they said, yeah, it made sense. Think about it. They pay me only if I send them a customer. It's results-oriented. Right. It's performance-based. It made a lot of sense to them. Instead of paying to be seen, they're paying for customers, right? So they allocate a large portion of their budget to advertising this way. And what I do is I go promote these companies. I don't have to work against them. I don't have to build a business and try to compete with these monster companies. I work with them. I, They've I, already got it going. Right. I'm helping them. I send them customers, and in turn, they send me a check. They pay me for sending them customers. So they're elated. You know, when they get, when they get a new customer, they're excited. They don't mind paying me. Pick up any magazine, watch any television show, read any newspaper. Dot com is the buzzword of the millennium. Hi, my name is PJ, and welcome to our short presentation. Have you ever wondered how the rich keep getting richer while broke people stay broke? and the middle class seems to be shrinking? Well, this isn't nearly as mysterious as it may appear when you examine the specific differences in how broke people, the middle class, and the rich spend their money. Now, this is such a simple concept, yet so profound, it nearly knocked me out of my chair when I finally understood it. I'm going to show you exactly how the rich spend their money, and you can evaluate for yourself why they keep getting richer and the broke keep getting broker and why the middle class remains so stressed out. Now to get started, I'd like to review some financial terms we'll be using during this presentation. The terms that you need to be familiar with are cash flow, which means money you bring in, expenses, which means money you spend, assets, now this is the most confusing one. You're probably familiar with the traditional definition of an asset, which is something you own or have equity in. However, back in the 1990s, Robert Kiyosaki introduced us to a new definition of an asset in his groundbreaking Rich Dad Poor Dad series of books. Robert taught us that an asset is something that pays you, and that's the definition we'll be using here. Liabilities is the last term, and it's defined as things that cost you money. As an example, a house is typically viewed as an asset, but can it actually be a liability? Yes, with our revised definition, anything that costs you money is a liability, not an asset. If you have a mortgage, your house is an asset to your banker because it pays him or her every month. But could a house also be considered an asset to you? Yes, in the right circumstances it could, when it pays you money. Let's say you buy a house and you rent it out, and it paid you a positive cash flow every month after all expenses. That would then be considered an asset. 
Now, one more time with the terms, just to be very clear before we continue. Cash flow is money you make. Expenses, that's money you spend. An asset pays you, and a liability costs you. Now, let's take a look at how broke people spend their money. Now, when I say broke people, I'm not referring to the destitute. I'm speaking about that large portion of our society that lives from paycheck to paycheck and who never seem to have any money. In fact, most times there's more month left at the end of their money. And I'm sure many of you can relate to that group. On payday, broke people buy what I'm going to call stuff. Well, what's stuff? Well, that's inexpensive things that people buy that they don't really need to survive. You go into someone's house and you can't find any counter or tabletop space in the whole house because of all the stuff on it. Their house and their cars are full and cluttered with stuff. Well, where do they get all this stuff? They buy it at the flea market, at the garage sale, at the dollar store, at the craft show. So cash flow comes in and then it goes straight out the expense column to buy stuff. You see, broke people never really educate themselves on assets and liabilities. They justify buying all of this stuff by claiming that it costs so little. But over the years, it's all they ever have. The problem is their cash flow never produced or created more cash flow. Now, please understand I'm not undermining or taking any shots at this or any group. I just see a lot of financial difficulty out there and it really doesn't need to be that way. Creating wealth isn't a mystery, it's a formula. The only reason someone doesn't create wealth is because they either don't know the formula or they don't apply the formula. Now let's take a look at the middle class. The middle class is the group that society mistakenly thinks are rich. They're not. Yes, they typically earn a six-figure income and many of them appear rich, but it's what they buy with their money that keeps them prisoners of the middle class. What they typically buy are liabilities. Remember the definition of a liability? Things that cost you. By buying liabilities, the money gets pushed up and out their expense column. Liabilities are items like cars, boats, houses, airplanes, credit card debt. Now, let's see just how this happens. The middle class gets a nice paycheck, let's say $10,000 for the month. They then split that down the middle and they pay their monthly expenses with half and with the other half, they make a down payment on a new car. The car costs $5,000 down and after they add on the insurance and the maintenance, that liability now costs $1,100 new dollars every single month. A few months go by and they want a boat then a vacation home, a Rolex watch on their credit card, a vacation on their credit card. And before you know it, their liabilities have raised their expense levels to near or above their income levels. They actually spend equal to or more than they make. Meaning that they have to go to work and make a certain amount of money every single month just to cover their liabilities. The other important issue with both broke people and the middle class is that normally all of their cash flow is dependent on their own effort. Meaning that they've educated themselves to exchange their knowledge and expertise for someone's money. Also, the money they earn is usually the highest taxed form of income. Here's an example. An attorney is knowledgeable about law, so people pay him or her in exchange for that knowledge on an hourly basis. The problem here is that if the attorney isn't sharing that knowledge with a client, then the attorney isn't making any money. This causes lots of stress and anxiety in their lives, and if you ever ask them to take an afternoon off to play golf with you, well, they very rarely can because of how much money it'll cost them to take that time off. On the surface, life's pretty good. The reality is that it's a roller coaster ride. That's the middle class. Now, I know this group very well because for a great deal of my adult life, that was me. 
Now let's take a look at how the rich people spend their money. Rich people acquire assets. Again, an asset is something that pays you. If you want to become rich, buy assets that earn you more money. The money cycle looks like this. Acquire assets that produce cash flow. Invest the profits to acquire more assets that produce more cash flow. Invest those profits to acquire more assets that produce more cash flow. The rich spend their money and acquire things that produce more money. Here are a few examples of assets that produce more money. Investments are the obvious ones. Stocks, bonds, real estate. Education is another asset. If you learn how to do something that produces more money for you and you actually do it, that's buying an asset. There's a great quote that goes, if you think education is expensive, you should see how expensive stupidity is. Another example of assets you can acquire that pay you are cash generating opportunities, especially those opportunities that can create a passive cash flow. Passive meaning that once you build it up, the money continues to flow whether you're still building it or not. Here's a small example. Let's suppose you bought a pinball machine and you put it in a barber shop and you don't spend any of the profits. You save them until you can buy another pinball machine and put it in another barber shop. This, by the way, was Warren Buffett's first business. If you don't know who Warren Buffett is, he's one of the top two richest men in America. The rich are extremely eager to find those passive cash generating opportunities because those opportunities continue to pay them month after month, year after year, long after they've stopped working the opportunity. You know, I see this happen again and again with successful entrepreneurs. They find a passive cash flow stream that they build up and it continues to pay them month after month, year after year. They then take those profits and multiply them in another passive cash generating opportunity and then again in another. In conclusion, here's what I've learned over the years. You can't find these passive cash generating opportunities unless you're open to hearing about them. Then, once you find them, you must be willing to see what fits you and then act. Now, the reason I say this is that I once answered a hokey little ad that I ended up generating seven figures from simply because I answered that ad and then took action. These opportunities are out there. You just need to find them. You also must be opportunistic enough that when the right situation does present itself, you don't miss it. So remember, broke people buy stuff, the middle class buy liabilities, and the rich acquire assets, preferably cash generating opportunities that can create passive cash flow. They then take that cash flow and invest it in another asset that produces more cash flow. That's the wealth creation formula. Now, I trust you found this introductory information helpful. Now, to learn about one of the greatest cash generating machines on the planet, click on the link below to proceed to step two. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Good Money, your trusted source for personal finance advice. I'm Tanya Rivero in New York. Ever wonder what it would be like to work from home? With advances in technology, more and more people are looking for home-based jobs that could easily give them the flexibility of setting their own hours and perhaps find a better work-life balance. It enables you to run your own business, be your own boss, but with the backing of another company that's there because you're selling their products or their services. Wouldn't it be nice if your commute consisted of stepping to the kitchen for a cup of coffee, then into your home office? Well, thanks to the Internet, plenty of people do it daily. Best commute in town. Very short. Takes me about 30 seconds. We get to choose our own hours. It allows me to do have the flexibility to do things with my wife and my daughter. So there are real work at home jobs out there. There is opportunities to work at home. You just need to find out what type of, type of an opportunity you're best suited for and research it and pursue it. For Money Talks, I'm Stacy Johnson.